Today we show you how to make a Tron inspired LED lighted wheels for your bike. I start the project by looking for a suitable LED light strip for the wheel. I have a regular 12 volt DC LED light strip but it only has one color. I found another LED light strip and this one has multiple color which is pretty cool. Another cool feature of this LED strip is that it has an infrared remote control so I can turn on and off the LED remotely. I bought it from Walmart for $2 on Black Friday, which is a very good deal. The LED strip has a double-sided tape on the back. So the plan is to tape it right onto the rim. And because the wheel spins around, there's no way I can install electrical cables to the wheel from a battery outside of the wheel. So the battery has to stay inside of the wheel. And this is the hardest part of the project. This LED strip is powered by a 5 volt USB, which is convenient. You can just plug it into a USB port and it will light up. The problem is, at maximum power it consumes between 1.5 to 2 amps. It's not easy to find a USB port or even a USB power device that can power over 1 amp. I do have some power USB devices that can provide enough power but it is too big to be installed on the wheel. I need something smaller so that I can install right onto the wheel. Let me show you the close-up of the LED. You see there are six dots on the LEDs, but it's actually three dyes, one blue, red, and that's green, just like the way it's being labeled. So I was thinking, what if I can power it with a single 18 650 battery? Is it going to work? So over here, I hooked up the single 18 650 battery, and it turns on, but as soon as I switch to white color, you saw that it, it was flickering. Yeah, it doesn't want to turn on to white. It just keeps on the blue color. See that? That's because this LED here is composed of three colors, red, green, and blue. So when you switch on white, that means all of these three colors, they have to be on. So that's when it consumes the most energy. So that's why it's got a hard time turning on all three LEDs at the same time. It's green, it's red. As soon as it's turned on white, it f turns on but then turns turns up right away because there's not enough power. This LED operates on 5 volt USB, so uh, four, 3 to 4 volts will be too low. What if I put two in series? So we've got about between 7 to 8 volt DC. Now let's try and see if it works. Right, it works and uh, let's see if it's consistent you see that now when I turn on to white color which gives the most power it turns on right away no problem at all there we go that's white and no flickering so it works fine with two 18 650 cells so now that I know that it works on 8 volt DC, I'm going to use a 2S, 2P battery pack configuration. I parallel it up so I can double up the runtime. Let's make the battery housing for the battery. So the battery is going to have to stay somewhere in here. I'm going to use a piece of foam. I cut the hole right at the center and squeeze it in there. And this is going to become the battery housing. The battery has to stay inside the wheel and it has to be positioned in a way that it balances itself on the wheel because the wheel is spinning. I don't want to just put the battery on one side and make the whole bike vibrate like mad when I ride it. Well, it's good if you need some butt massage, but not for me. I drill four more holes two on each side to slide the batteries in. So that way, both sides have the same amount of weight so they stay balanced. So here you go, the four holes for four batteries. Just like that. All right, so let me show you what I've got so far. Here is the battery pack contained in a piece of foam. And this is a 2S, 2P configuration. So two of these in parallel. And then this pair is connected to this pair in series. 
via this cable right here. I also solder a balance cable and XT60 connector so I can charge the battery. Right on the cable, I have a switch so I can turn on and off the lights. This hole here in the middle is going to go right onto the hub of the wheel and it is symmetrical. So when it spins around, it's going to be balanced. All right, time to put it in. All right, here we go. Let's turn it on. Lights out. That is cool. All right, so it's been a week since I made this LED and I'll show you this. The glue uh, stick on the rim is starting to peel off. It doesn't stick on the rim very well because this rim is curved, it's not flat, so the glue doesn't stick on and uh, starting to peel off after just one week. See that? So for the rear wheel, I think I'm going to change my plan. I'm going to put my LED strip into a plastic tube and then I'm just going to tie it on the rim here. So here's how I modify the uh, USB connector for the LED. So I cut the USB connector and I solder a switch onto it. And then also my XT60 connector so it can connect to the battery on the wheel. Alright, so let me show you how I mount the battery pack onto the wheel. So this battery pack is also a 2S2P configuration. But instead of putting them all together, I separate it into two parts. This is two batteries in parallel. And then on the other side, I've got two more batteries in parallel. And I connect these two in series by this cable here. So this cable goes from here through the spokes to the positive terminal of the other battery. And then the main terminal of the whole battery pack going down this cable here to my XD60 connector. The reason why I have two equal packs on opposite ends is because I want it to be balanced. So here's how I mount the battery onto the wheel. On the motor itself there's a like a, a ridge right in the middle so I slide the battery in there and to secure the battery in place I use zip tie and then I mounted this piece of metal here. It's got two holes. One hole goes onto the screw. This screw is the screw of the cap of the motor. On this motor, there are about, I'll say about eight screws. And then the other hole is used to strap the cable tie onto it. And I do the same thing on the other side. That way I can mount a zip tie and tie the battery and it's very tight, extremely tight, not going anywhere. Do the same thing on the other battery. So here's how it looks like from the top. So here is the clear vinyl tubing that I'm going to use for the lights. Inside the diameter half inch outside diameter 5 8 10 feet long total for each wheel I'll need about 5 feet so this is just about right and I bought this pack at Lowe's for about four dollars I finally got the LED inside the clear tubing let's plug it in try to see if it works very nice right so I'm finally done 
I've got the LED strip inside the clear tubing and the strip is double sided so I got LED on both sides let me turn it on here this side and the other side also I use cable tie to tie the uh, tubing to the spokes and that's pretty much it now let's turn it on you got a remote control here so you can change different colors for the front wheel the LED strip that I put on the rim the clue was starting to separate so I went ahead and put it in the clear plastic tubing as well now let's turn it on I can also change the color using my remote control putting the LED strip inside a clear tubing like this is a little bit more labor intensive and it costs a little bit more for the tubing but it has quite a few advantages number one you don't use the clue to stick it on the rim so you don't have a problem with it peeling out over time number two because the LED is inside a protective layer of the clear tubing uh, it is waterproof so it can last a long time I've got some extra LED strip from the project so I went ahead and installed another strip right on the frame of the bike and exactly as before the LED strip inside the clear tubing and I tie it to the frame of the bike it goes from the front all the way to the back so the light is going to look continuous from the front going through the top of the frame and go down and then to the back wheel this LED strip is originally made to be powered by a USB port so this time I'm going to use my USB power bank to power it so the wire is going to go from the LED up to my USB power bank and put on the top of the rack here I can also use the same remote control to turn on and off this LED strip So here we go, lights off, lights on.